if you will turn with me to Second Peter. Second Peter. Yeah, I want to do some teaching on this for today. Chapter. First chapter. Okay. Second Peter, first chapter. And right this is familiar. We've been through this many times through the years, but it just seemed like this is where the way the Lord uh, led me to go. You know, uh, I believe Jesus asked a question one time. Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I except some man teach me? Right. And so I found that to be true, you know. And I, I'm amazed sometimes at, at uh, uh, how that never ceases, it never stops. I was telling the church the other night how that I was, uh, Brother Mark and I sang at a funeral the other day, and, and this uh, brother gave a message, and it was the 14th chapter of St. John, which I use a lot in funerals if I don't. If I don't preach on I read it somewhere along the line. It's about in every funeral line. Somewhere or other. Uh, because it says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. You know the very familiar scriptures. And this guy began to uh, uh, teach on it. And, and it's just a very short sermon. It wasn't really a, a big long thing. But when he prayed, he preached it. God began to show me a, a little different take on it than what I had seen before. It never stops, folks. The learning never stops. Because these words that I speak unto you, Jesus said, they are spirit and they are life. And they're alive today and it may, may go forth and you may not catch it. It may not be just right time for you on certain aspects. So it may be part of it that you see and part of it you don't. And somewhere down the line, after reading it a thousand and one times and, and, and preaching on it and everything else, all of a sudden it opens up in a, in a different way. And this gentleman was talking about how the, uh, he said, I go to prepare a place for you. And he got talking about preparation, making preparations. He said, you know, I come over to do this funeral today. And he said, I had to make some preparations. He come pretty good little ways over here. Had to make sure my car was gassed up and I, I made sure my suit was clean and everything. And I, I got my, I got me a little message to throw together here so that God had led me to. And he said, while I was making preparation, while the funeral home, they was making preparation, they was getting the body ready, and they were, they were doing everything it took to, for the natural uh, part of the service. And the family, they were all making preparations. They were calling people from out of town, and they were trying to let everybody know. And So everybody was making preparations. And he was talking about our brother there, uh, you know, the light and state, and, uh, and he said, uh, uh, Thank God their preparations is already made. Yes. Amen. They already made preparations. That's right. Because the day come they won't make any more preparations. Amen. And now they've made the preparations. And now he said, if you're going to see them again, then you're going to have to make some preparations. Amen. That's right. Good yeah. Lord, he brought that out. So it just hit me right between the eyes and I realized that the, the whole world is in a state of preparation or supposed Amen. to be. Amen. Amen. Are you that or you're just floating around along with the breeze, you know? Or else you're making preparations. There are some making preparations for hell and they will get there by and by. Some of you are making preparations, you know, just lay up treasures upon the earth. They're making those kind of preparations. Laying awake nights, figuring out how they can can cheat somebody out of some more money or something. Or, or what they can do to overtake somebody or pass somebody up. But somebody's making preparations for that great and terrible day of the Lord. Yes. And just as sure as we're here today, children of God, uh, we used to play a game when we were children. Ready or not, here, here I come. come. You ever play that game? Yeah. Amen. We'd hide our eyes and we'd count, well, we'd count to 50 or 100 or whatever we counted to, and then we'd say, ready or not, here, here I, I come. come. And He's that's what the Lord is going to do one of these yeah. days. Yeah. And then it's going to be a matter of, did you make preparations? Yeah. Did you make pre you might as well make preparations because sure as you're born, amen, we're gonna we're gonna meet the Lord somewhere, aren't we? We're gonna bow somewhere. Hallelujah. We're either gonna bow in glory, in honor, in tribute, or we're gonna bow in submission. In shame. We're gonna bow in shame if we're not careful. But somewhere you're gonna bow. Some say, I'll never bow. Somewhere you will bow. So I remember uh, when I was a kid. They used to be a big old fellow used to come around our house and 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 he was a big old rough house type of a guy and he had a he had a reputation for cleaning out the bar rooms and that type of thing. Well, my my grandfather, who was my dad, and I, that's a whole long story and I won't go into that. But he was missing for 41 years. 
he left my, he run off and left my dad with his grandmother when dad was nine years old and his brother was six and grandmother had to raise them and he, he went on the land and he left, he run off, he just disappeared. And uh, they searched for him and as a young child I can, I've heard a lot of conversations take place about him, you know, they, we're discussing many times, uh, we was a family as they were back years ago, that every night we sat around the kitchen table. We had supper every night together as a family. That's right. that, uh, boy, a lot of people don't do that anymore. And we'd talk about our day, what, what all went on today, you know. And we'd sit and we'd ask Dad, what would, what would you do if your dad showed up? Oh, he said, he's dead. And he was declared legally dead after so many years, you know. They declared him legally dead. And uh, what would you do? They said, I wouldn't give him the time of day. Run off and leave me like he did. and. And he said, I wouldn't even acknowledge him, you know. And from time to time, we'd get a report. Somebody would come by the house and they'd say, uh, Tug, my dad, they called him Tug. I saw your dad. And this, I remember where he was. This little kid standing out in the yard uh -huh. down at 710 North Mulberry Street in Bucktown. And, and he said, I saw your dad. Oh, you didn't see my dad. Oh, yes, I did, Tug. It's Chicago, Illinois. I saw him. Spoke with him. And my daddy, he didn't, he didn't want to believe it. So he said, oh, no, you, you just thought you did. Somebody lied to you. My dad's dead. But, but anyhow, the time come, you know, that we got, a, we got a call one night. And what actually happened was he was in a hospital and he was, he was dying. And uh, this nurse was concerned because he didn't have any family. Or, and so she asked him, well, where are you from? And he told her, none of your family live. And well, come find out there was a Davis family that was killed in a car wreck up around Centerton, right there at the railroad tracks. The train hit, hit the car and killed a whole, whole family of Davises. I don't know who it was, but, but uh, I've talked to people about that up in there. And some of them had heard about it. Or, but anyhow, he, he heard that. And he made up his mind he wouldn't ever come back to Indiana. Didn't have no reason to come back, is what he said. And so she called. She called uh, Martinsville and said, uh, 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 or my uncle Charles did. No, she did. She, she called. That nurse, she called. And she got a hold of my uncle Charles Davis. And incidentally, Charles was married. Tony Rommachers was in here the night. Yeah. Charles was married to her sister, T uh, to his, his sister. sister, Tina. Tina Rommachers. That's how I knew Tony. I known him for. I gave her guitar lessons when I was 15 years old. <laughs> uh, but anyhow, I called and said, I, I want to know if there's, uh, you know, uh, anybody by the name of uh, the Davis family, who else? And so get to talk to him about my grandpa. And, and he said, well, yeah, I said, his boys are alive. And, uh, and uh, so he came to the house, and I remember it late at night, and told Dad, said, uh, your, your dad's alive. I said, he's up in... He's up in Grand Rapids, Michigan, in a hospital up there, and he's dying. And this nurse called and wanted to know, you know, if you if, if was alive. And so Dad said, "Well, I don't care." Said he can just he can just die, for as I'm sure, you know, he was he was kind of bitter, and he wasn't walking with the Lord real close at that time. And and uh, so, but my mother went ahead and packed the clothes and stuff. And when he got home from work, they said, "Well, I guess we ought to go up and check on that old coot," you know. <laughs> and she knew he would. She had everything ready to go. And so they went up there. And he made a remarkable turnaround. And, uh, God and healed just, him. Uh, he just didn't have him to live for as what amount to. And uh, they brought him home. Dad brought him home with him. Had and so we cancer. got to spend 16 years with him. He had lung cancer and God absolutely healed him. God healed him of lung cancer. Absolutely wow. healed him of lung cancer. Raised him up and I got to baptize him and God filled him with the Holy Ghost. And we got all that done and we got to spend a, a whole lot of time, you know, with him. And uh, well, I, I praise the Lord for that great experience, you know. And, and I was able to witness to him and... and uh, well, we can bring them, write a book about that, but I've, I've thought about the, the different ways that story can be told. Because I can remember, uh, you know, uh, the stories that was told, and, and I can tell it from my point of view, and I can tell it from my dad's point of view, and I can tell it from, from his point of view. He spent his life chasing around in hobo camps and stuff like that. Because following he the crops. He didn't have, yeah, following the crops, picking apples, picking tomatoes. He'd go up through Michigan and pick apples and go up, and he'd come down and go through the south during the winter time. But he wouldn't come through Indiana. He went around Indiana. And but anyhow, we got to spend 16 years with him. And uh, but but he was uh, declared legally dead and was gone for 41 years. 
And I thought about that, being without a family for 41 years. All the fellowship he missed out on, all the life that he missed out on, because he was alienated from God. Children, you know you can alienate yourself from God and take yourself outside the hands of God. And you're just as lost, you're just as much without a family of God as, as, as someone like that. Did you know that? But we are a part of the family of God. We're all His children. We all belong to Him. Flesh of His flesh and bone of His bone. Hallelujah. Filled with His Spirit. Glory to God. There's no wonder that some of us feel like we've known each other all our life. We've been born of the same Spirit. Hallelujah. By some of you, I feel closer than I do my own family. And that's the truth. Praise the Lord. Especially those that's not uh, trying to do anything for the Lord. You know, they're just kind of pull, pulled away from you. They're living a different life. I love them. But really, you can't have a whole lot to do with them because they're living one life and I'm living another. And it's a sad situation. And some of you, I feel close to you as if we were born together. And God does that. The Bible said He puts us in the body as it pleases Him. Yeah, right. It's no accident that we're... And you know what? If, if you used to backslide and go away from the Lord, well, you probably wouldn't even have me as a neighbor. You wouldn't even come around no more because you wouldn't feel that family thing. You wouldn't feel that familial thing. You, you know what I'm talking about? We feel this for one another because of the Spirit of Amen. God that Amen. dwells Amen. within God. us. God. It's not a light thing, children. This thing that we've got is not a light thing. Amen. He causes us to sit together in heavenly places. Amen. It's no accident that we all feel for one another Amen. as we do. My brother Albert, I feel like he's been a part of my family for years and years. I haven't really known him, but I just feel such a love from him and such a genuineness from him. I do. I feel such a genuineness from him. And I remember the first time he came here, I had to call him down. I was afraid I hurt his feelings. It hurt me real bad. I, I hate to do that. But you know, if we won't uh, take correction, then we're you're bastards and not sons. Right. That's what it says. And we won't take correction. We're bastards and not sons. Right. And Brother Albert, right. he, he didn't know quite how to act. And he was just going through like a bull in a china shop. <laughs> and I had, to, I, had to, I had to call him down. And I felt so bad. I felt so guilty. And uh, I met him at the door. And I said, listen, I'm sorry if I hurt your feelings. I wouldn't do anything to discourage you. And God bless you. You know, and he said, oh, that's all right. He said, I need teaching. Now, I loved him right there. Yeah, amen. That he would acknowledge that he yeah, needs right. teaching. So we all need teaching. Yeah, right. We all need to hear from God. And sometimes we have to have correction. That's right. That's right. What's the Bible say? That the man of God might be thoroughly furnished. Yes. Amen. The, the Word of God is profitable for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Yes. And again, I'll say this again for... Brother Bobby and uh, <laughs> Raymond <Rainbow> say, <laughs> you know, pray for them that have the rule over you, for they watch for your soul. Amen. The guy's got a kick out of me teaching that lesson here one time. I said, you ought to pray for those that have the rule over you. Absolutely. And I said uh, that I was telling, I, 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 see, I fill out a report card every, every once in a while. And sometimes I come over here and walk around in the dark and I and I, I start giving grades out, you know, to different ones. <laughs> Lord, I, I just I just thank you for this brother or this sister. They're just so good. They just just do anything to help. Just got we've been doing a lot of talking about our lately. I don't want to swell his head and get him in trouble. But you can't help it. If you if you don't feel that enthusiasm from him, and it excites me. I'm so glad because here's a brother that didn't have a whole lot to look forward to. But he's turned on to Jesus now, and I mean he's really turned on. And he lets it show, he lets it shine. And I got a feeling it's, I got a feeling it's real pleasing to God. I just feel that God is really pleased. And so he might bless me if I bless him a little bit, see? Amen. Raymond brought me a big thing of vegetable soup and I said, Look at Raymond out. He's trying to he trying to get that I was teasing him about Mark. I said, Oh, Mark don't know what he's doing here to up his grade a little bit, you know. He's trying to he tried to get to give him a good grade. <laughs> No, uh, I appreciate the love. The yeah, same man. Love. We knew. I said, son, I appreciate you thinking of me. I really do. I don't don't expect it. He always surprised me, and he does it all the time. I don't know why it would surprise me, but I'm always kind of surprised. But I, I do appreciate it. I don't expect it, but I, I really do appreciate it. Sure, but children, we all the children of God. And we ought to treat one another with that same right. kind of a love. Amen. Yeah. Amen. We ought to be very mindful of one another. 
Amen. When somebody's down, the Bible said, weep with them and weep, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. And rejoice with them and rejoice. Bear one another's burdens. Yeah. We're supposed to do that very it's thing. Like and I, and I, uh, I praise the Lord that I understand that. I want to, I'm just going to start reading here. Simon Peter, servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith. That's us. With us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and, and of Jesus our Lord. And that's, that's how it's going to come, children. Through the uh, knowledge of God. I'm going to tell you something. I serve a God today that I know something about. Amen. There was a time I didn't know very much about it. Amen. I mean, I served Him in ignorance and I did the best I knew how. And I had a lot of false concepts too. But I did the best I knew with what I knew. Or I felt like I did. And there have been times I didn't feel like I did. But as I look back on it now, I really believe I did. You know? But today, I know a little bit more. Now, there's a little bit more expected of me. See, because I know a little bit more. Right? And so, he said, to this knowledge of God, according as His divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of Him that hath called us to glory and virtue. See, He's got a calling upon our life and it's a high calling. Amen. It's not a calling like the world. The world does... Uh, the world's going to get back at them. The world's got an agenda that's their own, what they want. Right. Whatever they want. And they don't care what it costs you, what they want. They want it, they want it now. Amen. But see, God's called us to a higher calling than that. He's called us to glory and virtue. Amen. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. promises. I love it. Peter has several places in his writings talked about promises. He was one of the greatest preachers of promises. Somehow he understood the promises of God. Well, God, uh, Jesus made him a few promises, didn't he? Amen. Amen. He said, upon this rock, I'll build my church. Now, they wasn't talking about upon Peter, but he was talking about upon the revelation that Peter knew that he was talking to someone way yonder above the baby Jesus. He was talking to Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Amen. Amen. The first and the last. He was talking to the great uh, Creator Himself <laughs> manifest in the flesh of man. Amen. And he understood that. And he talked about the promises of God. And then he, he, he made some promises, some hasty promises. Lord, I'll never fail. Lord, I'll, I'll be with you to the end. And, and then we know how he, he, uh, he wasn't able to hold that up. Uh, sometimes our can-do can't keep up with our want-to. Uh, but don't, uh, don't uh, be so hard on people when you see them fail because you don't really know what their can-do is all about. They really wanted to go through. Oh, there's times that you see them fail. But you don't see him go off and cry about it. I've cried about it. Yes. I've cried over my failure. Uh -huh. Yes, I said, oh God, I, I really wanted to go through with you, Lord. And I, somehow I just wasn't able, you know. And that's, that's the flesh of man for you. Yeah. Praise the Lord. So it said, whereby are given us these exceeding precious promises, by, that by these you might be partaker of the divine nature. See? Uh, what's that all about? Well, you know that Abraham believed God. And it was counted to him for righteousness. <laughs> that means as a man, he wasn't really much more righteous than you are. He just wanted to do the right thing, but he was a man. And he was in the place. And no doubt he fell short in many ways. And you might think he's a great guy until you had to live with him a while. You might find out, oh my, he's got some faults. But one thing he had going for him, he loved God. Amen. And he believed God. And if God sent it, it's true. I believe it. And see, this thing, we're saved by His grace through faith. Faith is the way that we obtain it because we believe what He said. And that's what He's talking about here. The whereby is given unto us exceeding great, precious promise but that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. See, everybody else wants what they want. Regardless how much it hurts you and how much it puts you out. But see, if you're really of God, you'll prefer someone else. That's right. Amen. Lord, you give to them and I'll take I'll Absolutely. Take yeah. That's true. <laughs> yeah, I, I believe love that. that. Praise the Lord. And besides this, it said, giving all diligence. That means really working at this thing. Add to your faith virtue. You know why he said that? 
Because you can do that. Amen. Yes. You can do that. Brother Raymond gave the testimony many times about how hard-hearted he was. Yeah. And I, I tell you, sometimes I have a hard time acknowledging that because I didn't know that man that well. But I know this man here, and he's, he's, full of, he's got a lot of love in his heart. Yes. He goes out of his way for people in many, yes, in many ways. He and his wife both do a lot of great things yes, that you don't know anything about, but there's an all C and I that sees and knows, right? right? And but but uh, but see, thank God you don't have to stay mean. You don't have to stay. You, you know, you, there's we have access to God's promises yes. to make us more than what we are today. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, yeah, so if we'll add, if we'll give diligence and add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge. Yes. See, you got to know what you're talking about. I love people that know what they're talking about. Amen. Amen. Don't uh, willy wash around about it. I know. <laughs> you know. I know what I'm talking about. Now listen. As a, as a man said, Ronnie alludes to a lot of time that was, you know, was blind. And he said, well, you know, that, that's a carpenter's son. You know, he's just old uh, Joseph's boy. And, and, uh, and you know, yeah, this, that, and he gave every reason as to why that couldn't possibly be a miracle. And then man said, well, there's only one thing I know. I don't know. You know, I don't know any of that. Right. All I know, I was blind, but now I see. Amen. That's all I know. Hallelujah. And Amen. some of us, we don't know much more than that either. Right. We was steeped in sin. Our heart was full of sin. Okay. Our desire was to sin. And we was all wrapped up in it just like everybody else. Right. And no telling where we'd be today. But God in His infinite oh, mercy yes. somehow shed His yes. grace upon us <laughs> who were not fit to be called sons. Amen. And said, Behold, behold the Son of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Who oh, is that good? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So we can add to knowledge temperance. Temperance is that thing that's able to make you stand. To make you hold fast. Even when things are going bad. And you know, I'm not talking about just uh, running run through a troop and jumping over a wall, but I mean to maintain, just hold on, just oh. wait a while, and God will change it. Now just yeah. don't run off now and do anything rash, but I ain't going back no more. If I can't, <laughs> if I can't live it, I just quit. Wait on the Lord. That is, that is, a, that is a, a sure sign of spiritual immaturity. I'll just take my toys and go home. <laughs> I try this and try this and try this and I can't make it work. They don't say you're not the Savior, though. Say you're not the Savior. Amen. Right. You just have to trust God. You just, yeah. Well, they're all laughing at me and looking at me. Well, they laughed at Jesus. They said he was a glutton and a wine bibber. And they said he, I was a sinner. He eat and drank for sinners. And, and here was uh, the one that didn't ever commit to sin in his life. That yet they still found fault. That's humanity. You have that to deal with. Why that old Raven? I remember him. Uh, you know, <laughs> I was hung around with him up at the moose. Why he ain't nobody? That's 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 humanity talk. Uh -huh. And if you ain't careful, Satan whispered out your in your ear, and you believe that too if you're not uh -huh. careful. But behold, now today we are the sons of God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So you add to your knowledge temperance. And I've often talked about how that you could take a two before out here and just and let it rain on it and then let, it, let the heat get, get fall on it and, and that before you seen that old uh, two before be so warped and bent. And you, you, you ever go through a bunch of two befores trying to find a straight one? And sometimes you get you get down to the end of the you know, they, they're waiting on a load to come in. They ain't got very much left. I don't know if you've ever done this, but I have. Take him up and look at him, and it's like this, you know. Uh -huh. And you take up another one, you stand there for a half hour trying to find five straight tubifors out of a hole. Yeah. If you catch a new new load coming in, uh, you can find some straight ones. But after they've laid out during the weather a while, even bundled up, they, they manage to get to. But laying out there, just laying out there, and let the elements of the world fall on them. You ain't going to use them two before us. No, you might as well cut them things up and burn them. You ain't going to use, use them. But see, it's a temper. You get a, a tempered board. I've got some out there along the walk there that's been out there for about uh, 12, 13 years. Several years. Laying out the right side of the walk. And, they're, you know, they're uh, timbers. Treated. But they're treated. treated yeah. And they just lay there. And they're just, you watch her look at them. They're just they're about as straight as a stick. There's very little... Bold to them, ready to think of that. They're laying there, see? They're treated to be able to stand the weather. However cold it gets, 
However, a honey gets it, just kind of adjusts herself to it. Right. And you wonder why you're going through the trials and stuff you're going through. It's to get you adjusted. Amen. Get you adjusted. Yeah. Get you to heat you up and then throw some cold water on you. Uh -huh. and then heat you back up and throw some cold water on you. Oh, God. But I'll tell you one thing. It'll get you where you just stand there. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, Jesus. You ever feel like God's 100 miles away? Oh, yes. And you're trying to believe and you're hanging on to your life, but you just, he's went on a journey or something and you're just, you know, but what can you do? Will you just go plow on? You just look straight ahead? Yes. Amen. And Sister Wilson, I used to say, how are you tonight, Sister Wilson? She'd say, I'm blessed. Amen. Or she'd say, everything's all right in my father's house. God. And if she wasn't doing that, she'd be jumping up now and having a great time. <laughs> but but if she was kind of deliberate in the way she did, you just about knew she's kind of going through a dry spell. But see, that's what God toughens us up for. Yeah. Just ride through the dry spell. Yeah. Then good times will come again. You'll be shouting again. The joy will come back, see? Yeah. Amen. Just yeah. hang in there. Don't give up. Just cause things... And I tell you, I, I did a lot of that when I was younger, when I first started out in this thing. I struggled. I was up and down and in and out. And I'd, I'd get the victory, and then I'd fail and go back, and then I'd, I'd struggle again. And whew, That's why I had such a hard time with some of the habits I dealt with. Because I, I had to have that. Some way I had to have that. And I had, to, I had to defeat it somehow, but I had to realize that I didn't defeat it at all. He defeated it. Amen. Amen. And, I, and I, I am so thankful. I am so grateful for what he's done in my life. I, I just couldn't tell you how thankful I am for what God has done in my life. Amen. And I guarantee you, if it was up to me, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have made it to where I'm at today. But the goodness of God, amen, brought about those things in me. So he said, add to your knowledge, temperance and temperance, patience. And to patience, we know, what, we know about patience, don't we? Oh, yeah. We've been talking about patience many times. Amen. Tribulation. Work of patience. Oh, I said, you've heard the tale about the... Uh, and I'm sure this happened somewhere. I don't know. I've heard it repeated yeah. through the Pentecostal ranks ever since I was a, a kid. Uh, this lady came up and said to the man of God and said, pray that God will give me patience. And he said, all right. He said, God, just pour on the tribulation. Pour on... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, I, I want patience. He said, honey, tribulation. Work of patience. Uh, yeah. And I don't, you know, I, I, I can't point to who that was, but I'm sure that probably happened to more than one. If we could get around and, and through the years, I don't have any doubt, you know, that because I have people say to me, pray that God will give me a closer walk. I said, well, He'll give you a closer walk when you start walking closer. You can't lay out a church and get a closer walk. You can't fail to pray and get a closer walk. You can't go weeks and weeks and not read your Bible and get a closer walk. But there is a way to get that closer walk. And it's just not me necessarily praying for you. If I pray and think I'm going to pray to you, get a desire to look into His Word. And when you do, you'll get a closer walk. <laughs> but see, we learn through, those things, through the things that we suffer. Amen. So I said, uh, and to godliness, see, uh, uh, pay, to patience, godliness. See, patience brings godliness. Now you, you see an old saint, and he just, he just is hard to steal. And it just seems like they go through tribulation, they just go right on through. They just wade right now. They may not jump and skip like a, you know, like a man rooster, but they just maintain. They just keep their position, and they just go right on through. That's what, that's what that will do for you. It will cause you to be victorious. Amen. Amen. I, I said I've seen people stand and say, Well, thank God I was in great trouble. But God brought me through. And He didn't bring them through at all. They fell all over the place. They laid out a church and they, hey, we had to pray our brains out to get them to come back to church. Guess what? They're going to take that test again. Amen. You fail a test, fail a driver's test, see what happens to you. <coughs> yeah, take it over. Amen. Till you pass. But I'll tell you what, I do know what it means to go through and, and, and God, well, God take me through. You know, that's the first thing. I know I did not do this. You know? That's right. But God got me through this. Yes. And God, I praise you for that. Yes. 
Praise and that, that, that gives you that assurance. You know where your salvation is coming from. And that is true right. victory. Even though you might fail a little bit, you still have true victory down in your soul because you allowed Him to take you through. Amen. Amen. Well, I'll tell you, I know the Bible said to bless them and curse you, but I'll tell you, I have a hard time doing that. And some of us do. But in your patience, possess you your soul, and God will take you through. Isn't that right? He will. He'll take you through. He'll cause your enemy to be at peace with you. He'll cause people to come and lay things at your feet. He'll cause people to give you honor, and no doubt they went away and said, why did I do that? Because God honored you. Amen. Whew, I love this. To knowledge, timorous, timorous patience, and to patience, godliness. And to godliness, brotherly kindness. You know, you can always tell a good old saint because how, how kind they are, how they treat people. Amen. One of the greatest uh, things, charges that the world has against the church is they see people that are supposed to be godly and they treat their brethren even ungodly. Yes. Say, by this shall all men know that you're my disciple. Not because you can quote a lot of Scripture. Not because you know a lot about the Bible. You can preach somebody in to see. But that you have love. Love. One to another. Not one for. A lot of people have it for. But they just can't make it two. <laughs> love. You know? You consider that poor brother Pat over. He looks like a. He looks like he's practically skin and bones. I was taking oh, yeah. some vegetable soup over there. <laughs> yeah, he's starving. He, he looked. He, he, no, he's got the Jordan look. But... <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes, it'll cause you to act. It'll cause you to go beyond yourself. It'll cause you to do things you wouldn't ordinarily do. It'll move you. It'll cause you to be concerned about someone. You know they're going through struggle. Maybe they haven't come and told you about it, but you know. You just know. You know it in your door, don't you? You know when people struggle. I do. I do. And I say, well, well me and Daisy, we'll talk. I wonder what's the matter I don't oh, know. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray for them. They're going through a struggle. See, we've been through so many struggles. It's no strange thing. First no. Of all, he said, you go through a trial, don't think it's some strange thing. I, I mean, that's that's a part of the course for the children of God is to go through trials. Isn't that right? Amen. And we're supposed to bear each other up. We're supposed to be there for one another. Uh -huh. And you don't have to come and confess all your faults to me and, no. and all that. No, no. Just, just say, Brother Pat, pray for me. Pray for me. And you know what? We will. We'll pray. We'll ask God to help you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. I love this. And it said... Uh, for if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's going to cause you to know something about God. Yes. You know, don't you hate to hear people say things about somebody that you know? Right. Uh -huh. They just blow off at the head and they don't know what they're talking about. I had someone do that to someone in this church. Uh, just the other day, I heard I heard by the grapevine that somebody had a, a real all against somebody here. And I said, what in the world would that be? And they began to tell me. And I said, oh, you, you just don't know that individual. Come on, you're talking about somebody you don't even know. Mm -hmm. you, you, got a, you got a wrong slant on this individual. Do you know you can do that? You can think, think you're sizing somebody yes, you and you can. really don't know what you're That's talking right. about. Uh -huh. Or you see some kind of failure they went through and they... And they, and they worked as virtuous as you thought they ought to be. And so you'll brand them and say, I'll tell you one thing, I won't support nobody like that, you know. But, uh, but they just don't know. They don't really know. You know, if, if you, uh, the Bible said, consider in yourself, lest you, lest you also uh, be tempted. Uh, you point someone, why make them do a dumb thing like that? Well, I don't know, but I've done a few little dumb things myself. Uh, but they was talking about that. And I wonder why the individual hadn't been back to this church in a while. And they used to come quite quite often. And, and the rumor finally got back to him. Well, this one individual was just too much of a problem. I've seen what how they've done. And I've seen, and I said, man, yeah, I don't know where you got your news from. But you're talking about one of the finest people that I know. I mean, really, really tries to serve God. 
Now, I'm not saying they haven't made mistakes in life. I have, too. Uh, yeah, Whoever's without sin, let him throw the first stone. But I'm going to tell you, this individual is really tries to live for God. See, I know. The pastor knows what, who's who and what's what. For the most part, you know. And I said, you've got a wrong slant. You know, there's a little old uh, preacher uh, that goes to our prayer breakfast on Saturday morning. And I met him many years ago at that prayer breakfast. And I got a wrong impression of him. I mean, I'll admit it to you today, and, and I don't know why. I don't really know what caused that to be. But I, I really thought he was a real kook. I thought, I thought this guy, he's, he's way out there somewhere. You know, I didn't. I, and I had him all sized up, and I didn't. I, so I just didn't, I didn't have much to do with him. I didn't bother him. You know, he's one of my favorite people today. Uh-huh. And I, I've never told him that, but he's the sweetest. He's a, he's real shy, and he's a very gentle man. And he's had, uh, he's got to nine or ten kids at least, and they're all Christians. He's got one girl that's a missionary, goes all over the world. And I said, I said, well, you did something right. All, all those kids are working, and several of them full time for the Lord. He's got a couple kids that are engineers, and I mean. You know, and, and and after I got to know him, he's so precious. He's just a really precious man. And I saw him in a totally different way. But see, I didn't know the man. I got I got a conception of him that was wrong. It was just wrong. I kicked myself a thousand times over that because I had a bad impression of him. You can do that if you're not careful. Mm -hmm. Or you'll see somebody go through some big failure or something and and do something. Well, I'll tell you one thing. I wouldn't do that. Uh -oh. Now, well, you may not. You may do worse. You know, you may do some worse. Absolutely. We're all human beings, right? Absolutely. It's easy to make that statement. But under less and under pressure and the pressures of life and the weakness of the flesh, you don't know what you'd do. So the Bible said to pray for them and hold them up yes. before the Lord. Absolutely. Because they're still precious in the sight of God. Let the Lord be the I tell you, I've been around this a lot of years, folks. And I've seen very few people that were just absolutely hypocrites. Very few. Very few. Most people really mean well. Regardless of how much they fail, stumble, and fall around, they really have a desire within them to do right. For the most part, I found that out to be true. I don't care what church it's in. I don't care who it is. Most of the time, if you see them week after week after week going to church and trying to live for God, chances are they're doing the best they can do. So cut them a little slack, will you? And, then, and those other guys, don't try to figure them out. Just hold them up before the Lord. Yeah. I believe he said, wise is service uh -huh. and harmless is death. death. I believe that's what we're supposed to be. I'm going to let you out of here. God. Amen. But he that lacketh these things is blind. Uh -huh. He don't know it. Cannot see afar off. And had forgotten that he was purged from his old sin. Let me tell you what. Cannot see afar off. Now, you know, I've, I've got to and I've got my cataract taken off. I can see back in the back rows, so I can't hide behind my blindness now. But for many years, I was nearsighted. And if I was preaching, people give me dirty looks, I'd just take my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> and I did that a lot. I'd preach because I couldn't see past the first second row. And I called it my secret weapon. The Lord took that away from me now. I can see, I can see back there. I have a hard time seeing up here now. That's one of the reasons I got glasses. But, uh, but the Lord took that away from me. But, but, I, but I can tell you, the, when I, I got my eyes corrected, I couldn't stop reading signs. I didn't know it. For years, I couldn't read them signs. And I'd read road street signs, signs, street signs, yeah. house numbers. I'd read stuff up these. And I know about them over crazy. I'd read a sign way over in the field. I didn't even know there's a sign over in that field. <laughs> Spiritually, a lot of people go through life like that and they don't really see. They think they do. I remember when Tammy first got her glasses, she said, Oh, Dad, look at the trees over on the other side of the field. She'd never seen a tree like that. She'd never seen just a big blur, you know. Ever live, ever brain. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Ezra Davis, he was a, he was a, he had no relation to me, but Ezra was a hunter and he was well known mushroom hunter. And, uh, and, and, yeah, he, and they used to tell us on him, I don't know if it's true or not, but he was a man of the woods. He lived off the woods for years and years. He'd say, well, he said, my eyes are kind of bad, so I can't see like he used to. 
See that squirrel over yonder? The guy said, I couldn't even see the tree. <laughs> Picked that gun up and shot that squirrel out of the tree. And said, I my eyes still kind of bad. He was always saying that. Or he'd play me playing snooker over at the forum and he'd say, Ah, my eyes kind of bad. And then he'd run the table, you know. <laughs> you wouldn't want to get, uh, get, a, get in a game with him for money because he'd say, Well, I'm getting old. I can't see very good. I got to do it, but he can see very well. <laughs> But, that, but people go through life not really seeing what they're seeing. Uh -huh. You know, you don't know what people are going through. It's easy to pass judgment when you see the results of what sin has done to them or what, you know, life has done to them. There's an old song that says, don't blame her, life turned her that way. You ever hear that song? Oh, yeah. Mel Tellis wrote that song. Uh -huh. Amen. Don't blame her. Life turned her that way. Life will turn, yeah. it'll JJ. It'll cause you to see in a, in a way that's not accurate, you know. Hallelujah. But when you're when the Lord comes in, his knowledge will cause you to be able to see as it really is. Oh God, I thank you for that. And so I don't constantly pass judgment on people. To their own God they stand or fall. When I was a young uh, preacher, I wanted to straighten everybody out in the world. I wanted to I, I wanted to be the savior of all mankind. I was so quick going around trying to clean up God's message, you know. Boy, that didn't work. I mean you talk about chewing you up and spitting you out. Uh, but I don't lay awake at night uh, now, old people. Very, I mean, unless the Holy Ghost just keeps me awake, and sometimes He does. Sometimes there, and there's some concern on you, He doesn't. But most nights I don't. I say, good night, Jesus, and I lay down and go to sleep. And if I'm concerned about somebody, I say, Lord, you take care of them. Because He's the Savior, I'm not. Put them in the hands of the Lord, and He takes care. Yes, He does. Isn't that good? Amen. Wherefore, the rather, brother, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. You know what's really important? That you make it. Amen. Make your calling and election sure. Quit worrying so much about the guy over across the aisle. Pray for own. him. Yeah, work out your own salvation. This guy right here, i got to see that he's saved. Yeah. And I know what's required of him. I know. To, and you can say, oh, that's all right, Brother Pat. You know, God don't expect that. Don't tell me what God expects of me. I pretty well know what God expects of me. And when I ain't measured up, I know it too. Amen. Right? And that God will he'll, he'll lead you to that. I know what God expects of me. And when I'm missing the mark, I know it too. And there's a lot of ways that I do that I'm not what I once was. And it's hard. It's one of the hardest things I've ever come to grips with. Because I, physically, and I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, get, uh, cop out on that, but I just, I set out to do several things. And I get a couple of them done, I go lay down. Uh, and I wish it wasn't that way. When I used to run uh, 12, 16 hours a day, I, I can't do that anymore. But I'm going to have a new body. Praise the Lord. I'll have a new life. Amen. And I thank the Lord for those that have stepped in and kind of taken part of the load. And they, we have a lot of help here. We appreciate everything that everybody does for us. We really do appreciate that. But you know, I, I come over, I used to come and go through every night, pick up paper and all that stuff. And the uh, time I bend up and down about four oh, or five times or half a dozen times, I, I mean, I just, I just wear me out. I just can't do it. I just can't do it. And so we have some help on that, and I appreciate that very, very much. Amen. It said, uh, for if, you, uh, if you do these things, you shall never fail. Think about that. You shall never fail. That's not to say you're not going to you're not going to come short or you're not going to, you know, miss the marks, but you'll not fail. You'll hang in there. You'll pull through. Amen. You'll make it through. Amen. For so an interest shall be ministered unto you abundantly in the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Brother Klaus used to sing a song, Swing Wide the Gate. Yeah. I mean, that's the kind of, I want that gate to swing wide for me. I don't want to just have to sneak in, you know. Right. I want to swing wide. Oh, Hallelujah. And he like said he would give us an abundant entrance in. Yes, Amen. Lord. Hallelujah. Your burdens are great. Wherefore, I will not be negative to put you always in remembrance of these things. Though you know them, see, and some of you know, you know these things I'm telling you. And sometimes you've heard me say them before, that I'm going to put you in remembrance of from time to time, I've got to, I got to bring it up again and, and stir up your pure mind that you might get a hold of it and be established yeah, yeah. in the present truth. The present truth. It's important to be in the present truth. Amen. I found things years ago that wasn't truth to me. Maybe at that time it was, but 
presently, see, I'm open to more truth. And I have to live in the present truth. Brother Ronnie preached a message one time about used to. I used to. I used to pray a lot. Good message. I, I, I used to be faithful in, in this, that, and the other. Uh, but I just let it slip, see. I used to. I used to. I used to. A lot of people can say, I used to. But you see, it's used to, the present truth is what counts now. What are we doing now? I believe you need to, to look for the old paths. Amen. Look the old ways. Look back in those ways. When they taught us to read our Bible and to yeah. pray. Yeah. Now, you know, we talk about the traditions of the church a lot of times. And I preach against those traditions of men that we make laws out of. But there's some traditions that's good traditions. Amen. Reading that Bible is good tradition. Absolutely. Start that day with that Bible. End it up. End up that day with that Bible. Pick it up from time to time and read out of it. Amen. <clears throat> Let that be your guide. Every that's day. a good tradition, right? Every day. Yeah. Steal away and talk to God. That's what's good about taking a walk. You can go out and you can talk to God mm -hmm. as you walk along. Kind of... You know, make yourself available to God. He will speak to you if you'll make yourself available Amen. to God. Amen. Uh -huh. That's what He wants for us too, isn't it? Amen. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah, I think it means as long as I'm in the tabernacle to stir you up by putting you in remembrance. Yeah. Knowing that shortly I must put off this tabernacle even as our Lord Jesus Christ has showed me. He already pretty well had an idea what He was going to have to do. Moreover, I will endeavor that you may be able, after my decease, to have these things always in remembrance. Did you know that I've heard people say, and I know you've heard them say this too, I kind of believe they knew they was going to go. Didn't yes. You? I feel like they kind of knew it. Yeah, they knew it. I, I believe that God brings you to that place. Yeah. Yeah. Just surely as He talked to the old patriarchs and He said, set your house in order and uh, because I'm, I'm going to take you out of here. And so he called the family together and set the house in order and get up on the bed and lay down there and die. Yeah. <laughs> he was ready to go. Huh? Uh, one of our residents, uh, she's been real sick. And she's really precious to me. But when I went in to see her this morning, and she looked at me and she said, June, she said, I'm dying. Will you pray for me? So I won't be surprised. Oh, no, you won't be surprised. And see, God didn't but keep her in the dark. She's ready. God didn't keep her in the dark. Now, there's probably a lot of times in her life she thought she was going to die. But she now she, she, knows, she knows it's her time. I believe you know. I do. I believe you know. And you can look at uh, different things that people did and they say, oh, they must have known. They must have known some of the things they did. Yes, I do believe that. God, God will not even withhold that from you if you uh, sit to please it. So Paul said... Uh, for we have not followed cunningly devised fable. We're not following some somebody made up. We proved this thing in our life. Amen. God has proved Himself to me over oh, and over and over. Oh, and I'm not talking about something I heard someone. Yeah. I may have heard it sometime, but I'm talking about how He's brought it to life in my life. Yes. I know what our God can do. I, there's no doubt in my mind. I said, when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of His majesty. Oh God, I've seen it in so many ways. Amen. I know one individual. Uh, well, Sister uh, Sister Linda uh, Haley Lester uh, when her husband died, Bob. He was, he was doing this. And Linda said, what are you doing, Bob? He said, I'm shaking hands with the carpenter. Oh, <laughs> can you feel that? And she wrote that song, Shake Hands with the Cardinal. God, it's a beautiful song. A fantastic song, isn't it? Amen. And he had a big smile on his face. And you know, I always love Bob. He's such a sweet man. And of course, she got all the glory to praise because she was a great singer. People just made over Bob. He was real quiet. He was kind of off to himself, you know. And she got all the nods. But, but I tell you, he shook hands with the carpenter. <laughs> <laughs> I just got a feeling God was real pleased with Bob's life because he did everything he could to help Linda in the ministry and, and, and you know any way he could assist her and help her he pushed her out there and he was, a, he was a good man he always had a big ready smile I just feel like he was really pleasing to God Whew, but while she tell that 
Oh, she just gets you out and tell it. He was shaking hands with the carpenter. Oh, bless the Lord. Oh, bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, For he received from God the, the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved Son, whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. Yes. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, wherein to you do well that you take heed as in the, unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn, and the day star arise in your hearts. <coughs> Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation. It's for you, it's for you, it's for you, it's for me. Absolutely. Amen. For this promise you come not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy, holy Ghost. Ghost. Glory. Amen. God, John is still speaking oh, today. Hallelujah. I, I prayed for you, Brother Louie, while you were gone. I said, Lord, let him have some time, will you? Speak to him. Whisper in his ear. As I hope that you got a little time with God. I Amen. I kind of envied you a little bit. I'd like to be there, but I I, uh, I can steal away here. I do. I, and I go on walks and I, you know, how I seek God out. And wherever I seek Him, I find Him. Children, He's a wonderful Savior tonight. He loves each and every one of us. And He's willing that not any should perish, but that we should all come to repentance. Amen. Uh, we, we need to get our, our uh, focus off of ourselves. He's going to take care of us. Amen. He's going to save us. Help one another. He's going to save us. We need to get our focus on somebody else. Amen. Oh, Jesus. I love you. I thank God I feel so close to every one of you tonight. i just give you all a big group hug here if I could. I, I do. I get that feeling sometimes and I thank God for that feeling. Because it's a, it's a love. It's a God that comes out from God. I thank Him for it. You all have touched my life in a very special way. And I just appreciate the opportunity to minister to you. And I hope I'm doing this many more years to come. Let's thank Him right now. Oh God, how we love Him.